Another frequently asked question I get about Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster is, is it still drivable? So uh, let's explore what they did in order to make this work. And I should say that SpaceX has not released anything official. I've even tried to get some answers from some SpaceX engineers, and the only thing they confirmed is there were some changes made to have it be able to fly. But we're going to take a look at this. And despite the fact that I made the video, uh, can we bring it back? And, you know, with the cheeky title, could we steal it? I am not really so sure that this would work if it would actually work. Now, you know, one thing to, to know right off the bat from this image, the rear view mirror is gone. That uh, was taken off. That's a fairly easy thing though, but you could still drive it with no rear view mirror. But let's take a look at some of the other pictures. Now, we're going to look first at the official launch pictures, and then we're going to take a look and see what other sources that uh, were out there, mostly the video that SpaceX released showing the, the Falcon launch. It was a couple minutes long that they did a couple of weeks after the launch. So here's a, from the rear view mirror. The only thing of any real note we can see is that it was obviously bolted on to this structure here. Um, how exactly is it very easy to see? And you can very, very clearly see the rear view mirror is gone but it doesn't look a particular note. We know that the back end was facing down. And here's from the top, you can see there again, a little bit better of the structure, but the, the rear view mirror is gone. And you know this is before they put Starman in uh, or the video recording equipment. This is one of the later shots in the picture. You can see a little mini Starman and you can very clearly see there's no doubt that that rear view mirror is gone. So these ones came from the video that were released. They're not quite as high of quality because they were from a video camera footage and I had to snap these out of the YouTube picture. But right here we can see one thing very, very clearly different. They had the ability to mount it somehow to um, put it on. Now I don't think they actually left these in or maybe they left in some of them but uh, they had to, to lift it, and that makes perfect sense, but that still could be drivable, that they could lift this up somehow. So a couple of other things of note. Um, we see a bright light here. You know, a tire wouldn't reflect that light. It might be that we're seeing all the way into the back there, so there might not have been very much that was in here. I'm not exactly sure what was in the front of the Tesla Roadster, but it's entirely possible that whatever it was was taken out. And you can see a little bit of the line here, although you can't really see how they bolted it in. This is probably the most interesting shot in terms of the modifications that were done. This is taken from underneath the Tesla Roadster from the back side of it. Now, you can clearly see that this structure was bolted on to the Tesla Roadster. So, at the very least, there are a whole ring of structures that were bolted on to, to hold it firm when it was launching. Um, it looks like these are very regularly spaced. So, there'll be a whole bunch of holes in the bottom of it if you get to it. But a couple of other interesting things. The most interesting thing that I saw about this, and it didn't take until the third or fourth time that I looked at this. Look at this right here. That clearly to me is they took off the wheel, but where are the motors? Where's the axle? Where is any of that? There's nothing there. So it looks like they took the motors out and we also know that the batteries were right above here. They may or may not be in there. It's kind of hard to tell from this. And that's one of the, the more common speculations as to whether or not they took the battery out. But it's entirely possible. Okay, so what else do we have? Uh, here you can clearly see this is what the wheels look like and the back one presumably look the same. If we go back, it's pretty obvious that uh, something is drastically missing there from the wheel and presumably on the other side here. Um, 
So, and this is one more shot uh, from kind of underneath. It's a little hard to see any real details as to what was going on, but uh, you can get a little bit more of a sense of this. But all we've had is these very, very brief clips and, and random pictures to give us a clue. And this is a picture from every source that I could find that was an official release. Okay, so here's the big reason why I don't think it's possible. This comes from the Falcon 9 User's Guide version 2.0. It was released in 2015, so three years ago. It does not have updates for the Falcon Heavy, but presumably the requirements to launch on the Falcon Heavy are even more demanding than to launch on a Falcon 9. This is the acceleration profile that could potentially happen. And we see that you could have up to 2 Gs, well, even really 3 Gs of linear force. This the Tesla Roadster was considered a light payload, so it had to fit in the red box here. You'd have up to 3 Gs of lateral acceleration, and you could have up to over 8, 8.5 Gs of axial acceleration. That is enormous. There could be some significant force that was put on the vehicle. Now, I would expect that it could take the lateral acceleration fairly well. This was a sports car after all. But cars are not meant to take that heavy of a load of axial acceleration. You just don't have it. It's like dropping a car several feet, but the, the force of impact will be continual throughout the entire time. You know, the shock absorber will... will influence it somewhat but uh, that wasn't necessarily the case and even more so this is the uh, required frequency or the the noise frequency uh, patterns the the uh, vibration testing is required to undergo this is probably why the mirror had to go because I, I don't know about you but even my car just traveling on its own power the mirror vibrates and you know in a rocket that would be considerably more so that uh, obviously could not work and we have the acoustic loads which were even higher now I would expect that the acoustic loads it would probably do okay um, this is loud but Probably somebody has put in uh, this kind of speakers into a a uh, Falcon or to a Falcon to a Tesla Roadster, so it's entirely possible it could be okay. So what else could have changed? Now, unfortunately, this is the only picture that I could find of a Tesla Roadster that I actually had the rights to use. Um, I wasn't willing to pay five hundred dollars to use one of Elon Musk's. Uh, pictures from the Tesla Roadster from Getty Images, just a little bit out of my budget. But let's take a look. So unlike an internal combustion engine vehicle, you wouldn't have a whole lot of liquids. You had windshield wiper fluid, you may have had some brake fluid, and Freon, stuff like that. That kind of stuff probably would have been taken out, but um, not a whole lot of that that would need to be done. Anything that was potentially loose would have to go. So they, they anything had to, to take some very, very serious loads. Um, the glass probably would have been fine through the launch, but this was the maiden flight of the Falcon Heavy. They did not want to screw it up because they tried to put some payload that, that uh, wasn't really meant to fly into space. Almost certainly they locked the axle in place. So that way the wheel couldn't spin. We haven't seen any images of the wheel spinning. They probably did that. It makes perfect sense. Um, the battery being removed. There's a lot of question as to whether or not the battery was removed. And quite frankly, I don't know. Um, I could, it could make sense either way, but the battery would have just been extra weight and it's not really needed. Uh, it would have also kind of set the whole thing off balance a little bit, putting more weight in the back of the vehicle, although that could be corrected for. So it's really hard to say. Um, it's just what it comes down to. It's really hard to say. 
the bottom line is is the outside shell and the basic you know inside components but you the external shell was probably all the same the stuff underneath the hood and underneath the components probably had some significant modification for them to be able to launch it into space we know that the bolting of the the car into place would have just been instrument it would have caused massive massive damage you would have been through the frame all over the place but you could still drive it with that so that's not going to keep it from driving but I can almost guarantee that they locked the wheels into place somehow so that they could not spin. And if it was ever to be recovered, that would have to be done. The batteries would have to be replaced regardless of whether or not they're included there or not because they just will tend to not work very well. A couple other things. There's something known as cold friction where cold welding that you have two pieces of metal that are in space that aren't moving. They can basically become welded together so that they just can't move. So anything that was like that probably is there. Um, And then there's the question of whether or not everything could hold up to the environment of space. Now, the frame of it could. Uh, There's little doubt about that. The glass of it's probably doing okay, you can start to see in the, the Starman videos a little bit that there was some outgassing from the plastic components that uh, covered the windshield. So um, when components are exposed to vacuum, then they tend to outgas a little bit and, and really some gases that weren't really intended to be. So uh, and they tend to stick to glass surfaces. Very, very important to control very tightly if you have any optical elements in a satellite. Um, there's a lot of questions though, and I'd love to have a much better explanation, but it really does seem, especially from the picture of the undercarriage, uh, from the behind shot, that there were some significant changes that were done with the Falcon, with the Tesla Roadster to launch the Falcon Heavy that just did not allow it to, to, uh, really be drivable after And it probably wasn't drivable for a couple of weeks before. Anyways, thanks so much for joining me. Let me know whatever further questions you guys have about this or other topics related to space exploration. And thank you very much for joining me. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.